Joining me now, W. Kamal Bell. He's a stand-up comedian, the Emmy Award-winning executive producer of United Shades of America, the author of The Awkward Thoughts of W. Kamal Bell and Do the Work. Kamal, good to have you on the show. Nice to see you again, my friend. Thanks for having me. Let's talk about Trump's return trip to Butler, Pennsylvania, uh, hinting that there may be some people who indicted him, impeached him, and maybe tried to assassinate him. It's, it's, it's ridiculous, except that it's dangerous, and people think about this stuff, and they, take, they, they potentially could take action on it. Yeah, I mean, you know, if, there, if there's anything that is uninspiring, it's hearing Elon Musk talk freely. Uh, you know, I don't know why... You know, remember when remember when X was supposed to be a nonpartisan platform? Uh -huh. Remember back in the old days when he bought this platform? And now I don't know if that that's clearly not nonpartisan. And it's also not a platform that cares about facts or anything. And so they can get up there and say whatever they want to say. And their crowd will eat the red meat because they don't care about facts either. I'm kind of fascinated that he's become that Musk has become sort of a partner in this thing to do Donald Trump. But but they they've seemed to be simpatico on a lot of fronts. But now Elon Musk, who runs this platform, is talking about how somehow the left would like to not count your votes and end elections. All these things that Donald Trump actually talks about. He talks about suspending the Constitution for a day. He talks about um, not counting votes. He talks about how immigrants are stealing this election somehow. And yet. This just keeps on growing. There's no shame and there's no embarrassment at not having any evidence for anything you say now. Yeah, uh, my therapist calls this projection. Uh -huh. <laughs> so this is, when you accuse someone of doing the things that you're doing, this is what is happening. They, they feel like if they can accuse us, they can distract us from the things that they are all doing. And the case is horribly weak, but unfortunately, they have really played to the worst instincts of people and played to the lowest, uh, the lowest character of people. And people love a, love a freak show. And so the freak show was on tour, and yesterday it was in Butler, Pennsylvania. Let's talk about uh, what happened in Michigan. I think it was Friday. Magic Johnson was out there on the campaign trail for Kamala Harris. And in the midst of a very, very big rally with all sorts of people, he made an appeal directly to black men, saying Trump, quote, did not deliver for them in his first term. Uh, a recent poll from Howard University shows that 21 percent of black men under 50 who are likely voters are still saying that they will support Donald Trump. And one of the criticisms of Democrats that they have is that they continue to feel taken for granted uh, as black men. Give me your take on this. Well, first of all, thank God I'm not a black man under 50. So I, uh, that's the first time I ever <laughs> thought I'd say that. But, uh, <laughs> but yeah, I think, let's be clear, the same toxic masculinity that is uh, weaponizing all men, white men, specifically against each other, on the, against the rest of us on the Internet, is also affecting black men. Now, there are legitimate reasons to not want to support Kamala Harris. I don't know if there's legitimate reasons for black men to support Trump. I think that is basically uh, misogynoir, as we say. But, I, you know, I think that the idea that, you know, we are all vulnerable to the misinformation online. And I think that certainly it is a thing we can speak to, because my feeling is like, you can vote for whoever you wanted to, whoever you want to, but just have the right information. And I think a lot of the, if you, if a black man doesn't know if he wants to vote for Kamala Harris, that's one thing. Yep. But a black man who wants to vote for Trump, I think is confused about it, the information out there. And Matt Johnson did make that point. He was talking to people in that auditorium, say it's our job to help communicate this uh, to people. He wasn't, he, he, that was exactly the message he was giving. All right, come on, you're starting, is starting in a new election video that is being released tomorrow. It's called Who's Gonna Catch Your Kid? And it touches on the core contrasts of this particular uh, race, including care versus control, family values, and masculinity. Uh, you have been gracious enough to give us an exclusive first look. So for my viewers, this is the first time you're gonna see this. Let's have a sneak peek. As a dad, or as a girl dad, if you absolutely must, I think a lot about how I wanna show up for my kids. You can lead with anger, or you can lead with joy. There's care, and there's control. What does that mean? Let me tell you. Welcome to the library. How can I help you? I want a book about family. Sure, we have all kinds of books because they're all kinds of families. Help yourself. Thanks. That's care. This is control. Can I have a book about families? Here you go. Can I have a different one? Ooh, this one's autographed. We only have books about straight white dudes. They don't mention racism, sexism, gay people, trans people, ooh, or climate change. Gross. Yep. When I look at Tim Waltz, I see the kind of dad I try to be. The, let's make it a game dad. The, hey, I changed your oil dad. The, never been found guilty of 34 felonies and liable for sexual abuse dad. 
When I look at J.D. Vance, well... I had a Diet Mountain Dew yesterday and one today. I'm sure they're going to call that racist, too. You just said that this is a story that you yes. created. The entire future of the Democrats is controlled by people without children, by a bunch of childless cat ladies. He can't even imagine people caring about kids that aren't theirs. He's that dude where if the kid falls off the play thingy, he does nothing, pretends not to see, doesn't even look around and see where the parent is. Whoa! Here you go. Thank you so much. It's all right. I'm a comedian. Trump and Vance don't care about helping your family, but they definitely care about controlling it, taking away your right to birth control and IVF. And they care a lot about who gets to use what bathroom. You know you have gender-neutral bathrooms in your home, right? These guys want to take us right back to the 50s. Not those 50s. That's the one. Look, no dad gets everything right. I'm supposed to be making a Halloween costume right now. But we do have choices between the future we want and the future they want to force on us. There's care and there's control. Who's going to catch your kid, America? All right, that's fantastic. Come on, and I'm going home, and I'm going to put gender neutral on the on the bathroom. Uh, one of the things you touch on there is something that's very close to us, right? With the Velshi Band Book Club, we we talk about banned books all the time, and and you illustrate it in that one little piece where you say, "Kid wants a book about family. Family's a lot of things, and you want that teacher or that librarian who can curate it and say, "What is it you're looking for? Let me give you more of that," and you demonstrate what the alternative is. Books that are all the same. It has never worked out in any society to ban books. It, it never ends up well. No, and I think that, you know, there's an example right now of control of books happening in Oklahoma. The superintendent of the public schools, Ryan Walters, who declared there's got to be a Bible in every classroom. And you see that it's not really even an ideological thought. It's a grift because the yep. Bible they want are Bibles endorsed by Trump. Bibles that he gets paid to endorse. So this is not even an ide ideological battle. It's all a grift. And I think we, the more we point it out is in exposing it that way, the better we are. The other thing uh, with, with, you know, what Donald Trump did in the debate about uh, Haitians in Springfield, he wrapped all of the racism and, and xenophobia all into one. Black people, immigrants, uh, eating pets, tropes. It, it, is, it does feel like the desperate last gasps of a campaign, or at least a campaign that figures we're not going broad. We're going super narrow, but we'd like you all to turn out and vote for us because you're at deep risk of all of these people taking over your, your life, culture, and country. You know, I think we often think that we're in the desperate la last gasps of, of blatant racism, sexism, homophobia. Uh, didn't we think that with George Wallace in Alabama or Huey Long or, or you know, uh, Frank Rizzo in Philadelphia? I feel like we always think we're in that last gasp. We thought Obama was the avatar of younger, more vibrant, more progressive presidents, and it's not true. So I think that's why it's necessary to stand up to this stuff, because I want to be clear. I'm not some Kamala Harris stan. I live here in the Bay Area, and, you know, it's, she's, she's not always super supported out here. There's synagogues all around my neighborhood that it's a permanent ceasefire, and Kamala Harris hasn't been clear enough about that. So, But I think when it's so clear on the other side that what they are doing is only weaponizing hate and, and they are very clear that fascism is coming, you have to sort of put the person in the bully pulpit you think you have the best chance of bullying, and I don't think that is Trump in advance. Put the person in the bully pulpit who you think you have the best chance of bullying. Well said. I often say it's the person you think you can have the most influence on, but you, as always, say it better. Uh, Kamal Bell, good to see you, as always. W. Kamal Bell is a stand up comedian, an Emmy Award winning executive producer of United Shades of America and the author of The Awkward Thoughts of W. Kamal Bell and Do the Work.